Calculate the surface area of the rectangular prism given below. Don't worry about the units. And now just to save you some time, I've provided the formula for the surface area of a rectangular prism right here on the screen since we're just practicing. But just note that on your test, if you got a question like this, you'd have to go to the formula sheet that they'll give you and look up the formula. But I'm just giving it to you now to save you some time since we're only practicing. Okay, so I'll give you a chance to pause the video, try to figure this out. And if you get stuck, don't worry about it because we're just gonna talk about it. In order to do the calculation here, we have to figure out which numbers to plug into our formula. The number three down here would be our length. And the number four right here is the height. And the number two down here is gonna be our width. So basically all I'm gonna do is go up into this formula and everywhere where I see an L, I'm gonna replace it with three. Okay, and everywhere I see a W, I'm gonna replace it with two. And everywhere I see an H, I'm gonna replace it with four. And I'm basically just gonna plug the whole thing in my calculator. So this is how it should look. So basically, and these little dots mean multiplication, I'm gonna be doing two times three times two plus two two times three times four, plus two times two times four. And when I do this in my calculator, I get 52, which is the correct answer. So I'm gonna show the written solution that I typed out up on the screen. If you want to, you can pause the video and study it. And then whenever you're ready, just unpause the video and we'll do the next question. On Tuesday, Jackson bought a car for $23,000, then bought four new tires, each for 175. How much did Jackson spend on Tuesday, not including sales tax? Is the answer A, B, C, D, or E? So now is your chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. So we have our 23,000, and we're gonna add to that four times 175. Okay, so why are we doing this? Well, basically, the there are four tires, so that's where the four comes from, and they're, they cost $175 each. So that's why we're doing this. And if we do this math in our calculator, we see that the answer is B. And I'm gonna put the written solution that I typed out up on the screen. You can pause the video and study it if you want. And then whenever you're ready, we'll move on. Jade gets a $600 paycheck twice a month. If Jade's rent costs $650, her cable bill costs $50, and her grocery expenses are $300, how much will she have for spending each month after all her expenses are paid? And don't worry about any kind of taxes or anything like that. Just assume that this is what she gets to keep uh, twice a month. So now is your chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. So basically, Jade is getting $600 twice a month. So let's do 600 times 2, and that is 1200 So we assume that she's making 1200 a month. So from that $1,200, what we have to do is we have to subtract... Her rent payments, so we subtract 650, and her cable bill costs 50, so we're going to subtract another 50, and since her grocery bill is 300, we also want to subtract 300. So doing this in our calculator gives us 200, so C is the correct answer here, and I'm going to put the written solution up on the screen. If you want to see it, you can pause the video and study it. This video's champion shoutout goes to a test taker who says, I'm a GED graduate now. I finally passed the language arts yesterday on my third try. I had 148 to pass. The previous ones I got 143 and 144 respectively. And I want to wish this test taker a big congratulations. And anyone watching this right now just know that unfortunately sometimes it can take a couple tries. And I hope that that won't happen to you, especially with math as you study for math right now. But just know that sometimes that's what it takes. And here's an example of someone who had some adversity and persevered through it. And on our third try passed and is now moving ahead to bigger and better things. And I just want anyone watching this to know that your hard work is going to pay off if you just keep sticking with it. And someday this can be you and you can be done too. This next question is the hardest question in the video, in my opinion. You can let me know down below if you think that there was a harder question or if you think this was the hardest. I'll let you try it now. Solve for x. 2x squared plus 14x plus 12. So now is your chance to pause the video, try to figure this out. And whenever you're ready, we'll go over this. And if you get stuck, don't worry about it because we're just going to go over the answer. Okay, so there are two ways to solve a question like this. You can do it by factoring or you can do it also by using the quadratic equation. And I'm gonna show you how to do it by factoring. And then I also typed out a written solution of how to do it with the formula. And I'll, I'll show you that at the end too. 
Uh, but ultimately, it's up to you to decide how you want to do a question like this. But the first thing that I see here is that we can divide each number by 2. And that's going to make this a lot easier. So 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So I can rewrite this as x squared plus 7x because 14 divided by 2 is 7. So I can rewrite that as 7x plus 12. And that 12 there, I can rewrite that as 6 because, again, I'm just dividing each number here by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So now what I want to do is I want to take the first number, the number in front of the x squared, which we don't see a number here, so we just assume it's 1. And I want to multiply that by the last number. Okay, so I'm going to do 1 times 6, which is just 6. Now the trick here is that I want to find two numbers that will multiply together to give me 6, but they also have to add up to give me 7. All right, this middle number here in front of the x. So if I think about pairs of numbers, one that comes to mind could be 2 and 3. So the first test here is do 2 and 3 multiply together to give us 6? Well, 2 times 3 is 6, so yes. Uh, the second test here is do they add up to give us 7? Well, 2 plus 3 equals 5, so no, they don't add up to be 7. So we would just rule this pair out. Okay. Now, another pair would be 6 and 1. So let's think about this. 6 and 1, do they multiply together to give us 6? Yes, they do. 6 and 1, if we add them up, do we get 7? Yes, we do. So this is our winner here. So we want to work with this pair 6 and 1. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x squared plus 7x plus 6, and I'm going to rewrite it as x plus 6 and x plus 1. And we're not going to do this for the sake of time, but if I were to use the FOIL method, the first, outer, inner, last method, okay, I could take this x plus 6 times x plus 1, and I could put this back together, and it would give me x squared plus 7, x plus 6. And if you haven't studied the FOIL method yet, and you have no idea what I'm talking about, just don't worry about it. All right, I don't want to overload you if you haven't studied that yet. But anyway, all we're going to do now is we're going to take each of these and we're going to set them equal to zero and solve for x. So I want to start with this x plus six. So I'm going to take x plus six and I'm going to set it equal to zero. And I want to solve this for x. So since I have x plus six, I want to do the opposite of plus, which is minus. So I'm going to subtract six from both sides here. And if I do that, I will see that x equals negative 6, because 0 minus 6 is negative 6. Now, I also want to take this x plus 1, and I want to set that equal to 0 as well. So x plus 1 equals 0. How do I get the x by itself? I subtract 1 from both sides. These x's cancel out, and I'm left with x equals negative 1. And I know if you haven't studied factoring yet, this is uh, this can be a really confusing topic, at least until you see a couple examples. So I'll try to remember to put a link down below. I have a video where I break this down in more depth and show all kinds of examples. Um, but this is how you would get the answer if you do this by factoring. Now on the screen right now, what I'm showing you is the way to do this using the formula. And you can get this formula. It's right on the math formula sheet that the GED people will give you when you go to take the test. So if you want to do it this way, you basically just have to plug the numbers into the formula. It's up to you to decide which way you think will be easier on your test.